Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Thursday's episode of C-SPAN. Um, welcome to a special dive edition. We have Matt, our dive instructor, and Sheldon in the water with us today. Sheldon always wants to be the star of the show, let's be real. So thank you guys so much for watching and tuning in every day, Monday through Friday, watching the Florida Aquarium live. And a special shout out to our uh, sponsor of C-SPAN, CIBC. So Matt, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're doing today. Hey guys, so my name is Matt. I'm a part of marine operations here at the Florida Aquarium, one of the divers here. And uh, I uh, help uh, clean all, a lot of the exhibits, uh, do a lot of the guest dive programs, and we also uh, run the boat around here. So pretty good time. I'm in uh, the heart of the sea exhibit today. Turn a little right, I'm with my best buddy Sheldon here, our loggerhead sea turtle. Yeah, Sheldon is sure loving all this attention. We miss you guys so much at the aquarium, and we're so excited to reopen when we can. So Matt, uh, you're in the heart of the sea habitat. Uh, what kind of animals are in here? There are a lot of different animals. Like I said, we got Sheldon, our water red sea turtle. We'll turn to my left here. We've got Mikey, one of our uh, juvenile nurse sharks. He's just chilling in the sand. A lot of different kinds of fish. We've got some squirrel fish. We got some uh, big tarp in here, somewhere in front. This is where our bigger game fish, and yellowtail snapper. We have two bonnet head sharks. They're actually fully grown adults, about that big. And then uh, eagle rays and stingrays as well. Alrighty, guys. If you have any questions for our dive master Matt, we're doing a Q and A today. Uh, ask him any of your questions about diving, uh, the Florida Aquarium, the habitat he's in, anything like that. We're here to answer your questions this morning. So Matt, um, we have a special sea turtle in here who keeps making a special appearance named Sheldon. Can you tell us a little bit about Sheldon? Yes, yeah, so Sheldon is our uh, juvenile loggerhead sea turtle, although he is getting bigger very quickly. He's actually a rescue turtle. Uh, when we got him, he, or when he was found, he had a uh, uh, lot of elements and green debris around his neck. So now uh, he is a permanent resident here at the Florida Aquarium that are part of the sea exhibit. And uh, this is his favorite thing to do, just go back and forth along the acrylic, and then also sleep in the corner over there. And you mentioned uh, the type of sea turtle he is. Uh, do you know all the species of sea turtles we have at the aquarium? At the aquarium, yes I do. We have, so Sheldon is our blogger at sea turtle. We have Flip, who is our adult female green sea turtle. She is our coral reef exhibit. And then also we have uh, Ludwig. He is our Kemp's Ridley sea turtle. He is actually the oldest one. Alrighty guys, so the questions are rolling in. Make sure to put your questions to Matt in the comments below. So we have a, a question from Jonathan. Is it easier to dive in warm water or cool water? Um, I personally like warm water, but as far as easy to dive, I would say it really makes no difference. Uh, the colder the water, the more uh, exposure you have to wear, so a thicker white suit or maybe even a dry suit. So that could be cumbersome to some divers, but the temperature shouldn't make a big difference on ease of diving. And what's the temperature of the habitat you're in right now? Uh, the hardest sea exhibit is my favorite one to dive in. It is 81 degrees in here. All right, you guys. So we have another question. What is your favorite animal at the aquarium? Favorite animal at the aquarium? I would have to say Charlie the nurse shark. He is over in uh, the coral reef habitat. He is our bigger of the two nurse sharks we have. He's awesome. Yes, um, yesterday on the Florida Aquarium's Instagram, we featured Mikey, who is in this habitat right now. I think yes, he, he is. He's I think, over here. I think he's still uh, sleeping this morning, right? He moved. Oh, he's going right underneath. He's right over here. And uh, Mikey was participating in some training uh, oh, with yeah. some tonic immobility, which is a uh, a special skill that we use to uh, train our sharks and get some hands on them if they ever need medical care. Yes. All right, Matt, so talk about some of the other things in this habitat. We have some coral trees. Uh, what are those all about? Yeah, so the coral trees plants over here to signify what actual coral trees look in the, uh, uh, that we go and plant in the wild. Unfortunately, a lot of the coral reefs are dying around the world, and through the Working Center for Conservation that we do here, uh, this is how we try to replenish some of that coral population by using a known adaptation to coral pipe called fragmentation. We go out and plant little corals on these PVC pipes, and then once they're big enough, we plant them on the reef, and hopefully they take them. 
All right, we have a question from Nathan. What kind of sharks are in the habitat with you? So there are two kinds of sharks. We have Mikey, our nurse shark. He is somewhere. He's over there. And then we have two adult bonnethead sharks. There are ones up front, uh, swimming right above me here. Uh, they're actually fully grown adults, but they're only about that big. They look like tiny little hammerheads, but they're not. They're bonnet head sharks. Yeah, so these uh, bonnet heads, they do look a lot like hammerheads. They have a similar head shape, but they're actually not going to get as big as a hammerhead, right? No, they are fully grown uh, as of now. All right, so we have a question from Laura. What is the oldest fish in the tank? Hmm, I don't know. The oldest fish in the tank? I tell you the truth, I have no idea. Sheldon is a sub-adult loggerhead sea turtle, so yes. sub-adult um, can be anywhere from 10 to 20 years old. Um, sea turtles, it's actually pretty hard to tell their age, right, Matt? Yes, and so is a lot of other animals. Yeah, it's um, pretty hard to tell the age of a lot of animals. Um, sometimes it's dependent upon size, um, but other times, like the sea turtles, it might be when their tails get longer, so that would be an indication of a male sea turtle when their tails are a little bit longer. Um, and it has a large portion to do with their size. All right, so we have a question from Janelle. She wants to know a little bit about the eagle rays. She says they have funny faces. Yeah, they kind of do. So the eagle rays, there's one swimming way back there. They like the, sur they like the surface. We have two male eagle rays in here. So you can always tell the male from the female eagle rays because the males are the smaller ones and they're brown. The females, they're much, much bigger, about six foot wingspan, and they're blue. They're actually uh, pelagic swimmers as well, so they like to more of the open space. They don't spend some of their time on the uh, ocean floor as the stingrays do. They're really, really cool. So Matt, talk a little bit about what it's like to be a dive master at the aquarium. Tell us about that. Oh, it's a great time to dive around here. So one of our uh, big things we do, like I said, we help keep the habitats clean. So algae is the number one enemy of aquariums. So we have to hop in all the time and uh, uh, do what we call scrub shifts. Sorry if I'm in your way, Sheldon. And also we want our, what's called our guest dive experiences. So anybody that comes to the aquarium can sign up to dive in the, or swim in the exhibit with the animals. If you're scuba certified, you can also scuba dive in the exhibit with the animals as well. It's really, really cool. We'll get you in the water up close with the animals and I make sure everything goes according to plan while you're in there. So Matt, tell us a little bit about getting dive certified. Uh, what, what's that process like? So getting dive certified, uh, once you get a certification, it's good forever, and it's probably the best decision I ever made because it led me to work here. Uh, you're going for what's called your open water diver certification, and that lets you dive within uh, certain limits uh, with a buddy without an instructor. Depending on where you get it, it's either, I would say, a comfortable five-day course, and uh, you do a lot of skills in a pool, you do some book work, do some online work, and then you actually take those skills, do them in open water or open ocean, and then you're a diver. And that was Mikey just swimming across the frame here. That is one of the nurse sharks at the Florida Aquarium. So Matt, you also drive our Bay Spirit too, right? You're a boat captain. Yes, ma'am. So tell me a little bit about what it's like to drive such a big catamaran. Uh, so that's one of the other fun things about my job. We have our wild dolphin crews in, uh, out of the Florida Aquarium. We go to Hillsborough Bay and back and we look for dolphin. And I am one of the captains of that. So the Bay Spirit 2 is a 79 foot double decker catamaran, holds up to 149 passengers. But really, it's just like trying to drive it, uh, captaining any other boat, because there's all the same responsibilities. And uh, it's a great time. It gets me out of the water every day. So when you're on our wild dolphin cruise, we do see a lot of dolphins. Can you tell us about the wildlife you might see on the cruise? Yeah, so like you said, uh, we get a lot of bottlenose dolphin, which is the main reason we go out there, trying to spot those dolphin. But we also get a lot of other creatures, including uh, a lot of uh, wild green birds, such as pelicans and uh, osprey. And uh, every once in a while, we can see a turtle or even a bonnet shark. That's awesome. And you know, while we're closed, we are missing you guys so much. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, the wildlife is definitely interacting with you, Matt. I think they are uh, in need of some company. These guys miss our guests so much, and we miss you guys a lot. Um, we've been trying to provide you guys with daily content while we're closed, um, so you guys can still hang out at the aquarium with us, even though you are at home.
All right, so we have a question from Laura. Uh, when you're not working at the aquarium, what's your favorite dive spot? My favorite dive spot is going to be a uh, shipwreck called the USS Spiegel Grove. Excuse me, Sheldon. The USS Spiegel Grove is down in uh, Key Largo, Florida. It's one of my all-time favorites to dive. It's really big. It's kind of deep. It's a great time. And what kind of things would you see on those kinds of dives? Oh, man. Uh, almost everything. There's a lot of big glide grouper, barracuda, all different types of fish. I've seen some turtles on it, a couple bigger sharks, some balls, something like that. It's even, uh, they've actually seen two whale sharks in the past 10 years there, too. I haven't, but other people have. So we have a question from Gina. Uh, they want to know, uh, they live in Oregon. Do we have any whales locally? Whales here around here locally? Uh, I would say no, especially in the Gulf of, the Gulf of Mexico. If one happens to be here, uh, my guess is it's lost. All right, so Christy wants to say hi to Sheldon. Uh, Sheldon, this is basically what he does, yep, he's guys. Back around. Hey, Sheldon. Sheldon loves uh, the spotlight, and whenever we do live videos, he's definitely one of the uh, animals who loves to get attention. Uh, we uh, just celebrated our 25th anniversary, and Sheldon got a pretty awesome ice treat uh, filled with some of his favorite fish, and that was a really great treat for him. So, yes, he wants to know how many different species do we have in the tank? There is a lot, right? Yes, in this exhibit, I would say species wise, at least 40 or 50 different species. Uh, as far as number of fish, uh, it's in the hundreds, thousands. So, Laura wants to know how many gallons of water are in the tank that you're in. So this exhibit is 100,000 gallons. Uh, our biggest one, uh, the Coral Reef Exhibit, that's 500,000 gallons. So this is the second biggest exhibit we have. And what do you think? Do you like to dive in this habitat better or our largest half a million gallon habitat? I personally like this one. It's my favorite. Because, just because it's warmer. It's 81. It's fantastic. So Rachel's told us that the bird's whale is the only baleen whale to visit the Gulf of Mexico. All right. And there's also sperm whales and many dolphin species. So I guess some of these guys do say hi um, on the Florida coast. Well, I've never seen one. I have seen a lot of uh, uh, dolphins in the Gulf. And they, I guess you could say, they are all dolphins are whales, but all not whales are dolphins. All right, Matt. So while you're in this habitat, is there uh -huh. any uh, special dive tricks you can show us? Um, yeah, let me, I can go upside down, I just well, this kind of fun. I can do a somersault, but all, with all these cables, I would want to get myself tangled up. Oh, let's see if I can do it. Oh. Ah, going up. And we can go. Oh yeah, that was awesome. And Sheldon still steals his spot. <laughs> I mean, Matt, I don't know if you can compete with Sheldon. He's pretty adorable. It's tough. So, Matt, talk about the special face mask you're using to talk to me right now underwater. Yeah, so this is a, uh, what we call just a full face mask. It's made by uh, OTS. So my regulator portion is built in here, and it actually keeps my whole cut of face, the whole face dry with built-in communication. So I have a microphone inside here and two uh, headphones here. And here, that lets me talk to you and lets me hear what you're saying. But that's what all these cables are for. The blue one is my audio, and the uh, black one is my video. I actually have a camera right here when we do uh, our Heart of the Sea show. That's awesome. Um, is it hard to talk to me while you're underwater and breathe? Not at all. It's just like talking to anybody else on the surface. So Janelle wants to know if you can do any bubble rings with this mask. With the full face? No, I cannot. It would be uh, one half of a trick to take the whole thing off, do one bubble ring, and put the whole thing back on. All right, Matt, so talk about our special swim and dive programs we have at the aquarium. Uh, do you find that a lot of people are scared when they're getting in our habitats, uh, or are people typically comfortable? So it varies. Some people are very gung ho and want to hop in. Other people, very, very nervous, especially because the sharks are the things that read online. But that's exactly what the swims are for. Get you in the water with the animals and realize that they're just going about their day, and they're not a danger to you. Especially the, uh, the shark swim, we have in our coral reef exhibit, and then we also have the heart of the sea swim, 
which is actually here for uh, six and older. It's a really, really great time. Way to get those kids comfortable with marine life. Yeah, our swim and dive programs are amazing. Uh, I did my dive with Matt at the aquarium and it was so much fun. Uh, our sand tiger sharks get super close to you and I was a little bit nervous when I went in for the first time, but uh, once the sharks actually got pretty close, it wasn't really that scary. Are you ever scared of the sharks, Matt, or are you comfortable with them now? Not at all. I'm comfortable with all the animals I dive with every day because I know they're comfortable with me. All right, so Laura wants to know, are you CAVE certified or NITROC certified? Am I CAVE certified? So I don't have a CAVE certification, but I do have a NITROC. And are those uh, additional certifications challenging to get, or is it just another class? It's just kind of another class. Um, once you get your open water, which is your first certification, then you can take, uh, let's say, advanced open water, and then there's all those what's called specialty courses. Like you mentioned, night trucks, cave, all that stuff. Uh, I would recommend, here we go. I would recommend uh, spreading them out. I wouldn't go for open water, advanced, cave, night trucks all in the same week, even if you have the money to do so. Get some dives, and then go for those specialties, go for those advanced. So, what's your favorite part about diving? All the places I can go and all the things I can see underwater is. It's why I do what I do. It's why I chose this great path. I love diving and whatever gets me in the water. So Matt, talk a little bit about what you went to school for and did you always want to work in an aquarium or uh, be a dive master? Sure. So I went to school at Coastal Carolina, Myrtle Beach, majoring in marine science. And to tell you the truth, the only reason I picked that is because in high school, I was a, uh, I was a diver then and it sounded like something that would keep me in the water. And when I was in school, I got my dive master certification, and right after I got out of school, I got my captain's license. And really, um, my whole career path is just options of what would keep me in the water, keep me on the water, and the aquarium is a great fit because I can use my captain's license, and I could dive here. It's perfect. That's awesome. And have you been doing a lot of maintenance um, on our habitats while we're closed, keeping them nice and clean? Most definitely. So even though we don't have guests here, uh, these, these exhibits and habitats still need to be cleaned on a daily basis. So that's what we've been in here doing, diving and cleaning. So Jack just tuned in and wants to know what the sea turtle's name is. His name is Sheldon. He is our loggerhead sea turtle here. He's pretty cool and I'm surprised he's not right in front of me. Yeah, so we did a special naming contest for Sheldon, so uh, a special fourth grade class actually got to pick the name of Sheldon. They won the contest and got to visit the Florida Aquarium and have a special field trip, which was super awesome. All right, so Janelle wants to know why growing coral is important. So like I said, a lot of the coral reefs around the world are either sick or dying, which is uh, taking the coral reef uh, habitats down there. It's, it's a huge bummer on So we uh, plant these coral, coral trees to help try to build up their coral population again and uh, try to save the reef. Alrighty guys, so we have a couple more questions left that we can answer, so put your comments uh, and questions in the comments below and we'd be happy to answer them. So we have a question from Catherine. They would like to know what animals are most curious about the divers? Um, just, I would say that guy right there, Sheldon, the long red sea turtle, and then also Mikey, who is our nurse shark in here. Uh, I, I guarantee you if I went and kneeled on the sand right now, Mikey would come right up to me, and uh, he would want something. So, thank you a lot. And also... All right, so with Mikey being a nurse shark, um, nurse sharks are pretty cool. They hang out at the bottom, typically, uh, sandy bottoms, and they uh, look like they're just sleeping most of the time. Uh, but Mikey is actually pretty trained and can come up and do special interactions with our biologists. So he is one of the uh, awesome animals in this habitat. Alrighty guys, so that is it from us. Uh, thank you for tuning in to C-SPAN. Uh, we'll be live tomorrow at our Center for Conservation in Apollo Beach, talking to coral scientist Carrie O'Neill, checking up on our coral, uh, staghorn coral that we have growing out there.
Thank you so much to Matt, our, our dive master, for joining us today. And uh, anything you want to say, Matt, before we head out? Nope. Everybody stay safe. Have a great time out there. And I'll be cleaning in here. See you guys. Alrighty, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And thanks again to our uh, sponsor of C-SPAN, CIBC. We'll see you guys at 10 a.m. tomorrow.